Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on achalasia. Achalasia is a primary motility disorder of the esophagus, characterized by a failure of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, and the absence of peristalsis along the esophageal body. It is quite rare, with an incidence of 1 in 100,000. Mean age of diagnosis is around 50 years old, and those who have achalasia, has 8 to 16 times higher risk of having esophageal cancer. For clinical features, patients with achalasia will classically present with progressive dysphagia when ingesting both solids and liquids, as well as regurgitation of food. Other symptoms include respiratory complications, either a nocturnal cough or aspiration, chest pain, dyspepsia, and weight loss. For investigations, in any patient presenting with dysphagia, an upper GI endoscopy, OGDS, is essential in order to exclude cancer as the cause of symptoms. In severe disease, endoscopy might show a dilated esophagus with retained food and increased resistance at the gastroesophageal junction. The gold standard in the diagnosis of motility disorders is esophageal manometry. This procedure involves a pressure-sensitive probe inserted into the esophagus, approximately 5 cm proximal to the lower esophageal sphincter, which measures the pressure of the sphincter and the surrounding muscle. In achalasia, the three key features on manometry are Absence of esophageal peristalsis, failure of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, and a high resting lower esophageal sphincter tone. Another investigation is the barium swallow, which is rarely done now. It may show proximal dilation of the esophagus, with a characteristic bird's beak appearance distally, due to the failed dilation of the lower esophageal sphincter. This is a picture of the barium swallow in a case of achalasia, showing the bird's beak appearance here. This is an example of the manometry finding, demonstrating aperistaltic contractions, increased intraesophageal pressure, and failure of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. High-resolution manometry is increasingly being used to provide more detailed information on esophageal motility, and can provide a subclassification of achalasia into three groups, based on the pattern of contractility in the esophageal body. Type 1 is classical achalasia, with no evidence of pressurization. Type 2 is achalasia with compression or compartmentalization in the distal esophagus more than 30 mm of mercury. Type 3 is with two or more spastic contractions. The management of achalasia can be divided into medical and surgical management, all aiming to reduce the LES pressure and relieve the outflow obstruction. All patients should be given advice including sleeping with multiple pillows to minimize regurgitation, eating slowly and chewing food thoroughly, and taking plenty of fluids with meals. Pharmacological options include the use of calcium channel blockers, typically sublingual nifedipine, to inhibit LES muscle contraction, or Botox injection into LES via endoscopy. For surgical management, there is the laparoscopic Heller myotomy, which involves the division of the specific fibers of the lower esophageal sphincter which fail to relax. Second is peroral endoscopic myotomy, where a cardiomyotomy at the LES is performed from the inside of the esophageal lumen, through a submucosal tunnel. And lastly using endoscopic balloon dilatation, where there is insertion of a balloon into the lower esophageal sphincter, which is dilated to stretch the muscle fibers. That's all for this video. Thank you.